Welcome back to the channel everyone and if you're new welcome today we're talking about methane capture and our attempt at capturing methane off of our Jean Payne compost heating system. So last night we saw about 15 degrees for a temperature with about 30 to 40 mile an hour wind resulting in about a zero degree windshield blowing over this greenhouse. So I'm glad to see good temperatures in the greenhouse and our compost heating systems have been running flawlessly. It's still only about 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside with a windshield of about 12. But when I come in the greenhouse, I'm always reduced to taking my sweatshirt and coat off. I cannot stand being sweaty in here. So it is really cool to be able to have a nice heated area. You see all this moisture falling and basically watering the floor. About. I don't know how well you guys can see all the tiny little sprouts we've got popping up throughout the whole bed here. So we've got tons of lettuce sprouting up in between all of our kales. So that system is kind of revolving and recycling the water in there, which is great. So we've got sprouts throughout the whole bed. You can see a little lettuce coming up all the way down to this point. So that is awesome. We've got lots of life coming up in here. I still haven't buried that PEX tubing. I'm not really overly worried about that because transferring the heat at the bottom of the PEX right to the floor is what we're doing anyway. And that's insulated from being inside the tunnel. So we've got good temperatures throughout the whole greenhouse. What is this side sitting? We've got a cool 65 degrees down here. So the sun is definitely warming up our double panel system we created. We wanted a nice transparent system for that end of the greenhouse so we could basically get as much sunlight through it as we possibly could. Passive effect of having two layers of poly and creating a dead layer of air that's about two to three inches on that whole southern wall. That's a good passive temp to warm our tank up and warm that whole end of the greenhouse up so all of that water is warming about 110 gallons or so. I just wanna show how well everything in here is doing these are some real cold hardy crops here you can see our cilantro had a little cold damage but this double layer of poly is preventing all of these from getting frost bitten we've got spinach and shards and a whole bunch of our corn salad there just random corn salad or mache is popping up throughout the entire bed because we had a bunch here and let it go to seed this summer and all of it had spread throughout this whole bed so I think this is our rapini broccoli. I'm going to kind of dig all this up and maybe place it throughout a few spots in our beds here and kind of spread all this out because it's all bunched together pretty heavily. So we've got these shards that have been sitting from summer. These are probably a year and a half old. We transplanted them from the outside into the greenhouse and then brought them all down here by each other and then let them sit into the winter here. Got some nice butter crunch lettuce or Grand Rapids possibly, I'm not sure purple tat soy chamomile random stuff popping up throughout this whole little bed here wherever there's moisture so i wanted to share all the little life in here that's coming up from the benefit of our insulation our double layers and the compost heating that we're doing for basically free so let's jump over here i got a whole box full of methane capturing stuff and we're going to go over all of that right now so today I want to talk to everyone about methane capture from our Jean Payne compost heating system. And we used all wood chips, a little bit of chicken poo and bedding, and a lot of nitrogen. We used a lot of urine. And we threw a bunch of green stuff on top and kind of mixed it in the top layer so it all seeps down. And we watered it in very well. And we basically tarped it and capped it like a large bag. And I used an old piece of poly to catch all of that methane because it will rise up through a normal tarp. Warm in here. It is actively heating me up. I got these bricks. These bricks were registering about 72 degrees. So we're heating those bricks up to about 72. And we're blowing about 100 degrees on them, give or take, between 90 and 100 degrees, depending on how cold it is outside and how cold it is in the greenhouse. The overnight temps were so low and the wind was so bad, these bricks were about 40 degrees, 39, 40 degrees when we came out this morning. Inside our tunnels was sitting probably about 45, almost 50 degrees. So that is amazing for us. So let's jump back into the methane heating here. I've got my whiteboard and hopefully everybody can bear with me. I'll do the best I can to make it legible and visible for everybody here. So Jean Payne himself was harvesting methane off of 
50 ton plus piles and here we are with three four ton thinking we're doing something he had 50 plus ton piles and he was harvesting the methane to run a generator to power his house he was using the methane to power his truck and he also used it for fuel to cook with aside from that he used the hot water in massive storage tanks he would basically run coiled water to large vats of water and basically pull all that heat off and store it in his house and be able to heat his house and keep it warm enough with the thermal mass of those water tanks now he did experiment with heating air and running tubes but he was more well known for his methane capture and heating of hot water we can pretty easily take waste such as wood chips like we use for free or animal manure lots of people have cows horses chickens pigs you can allocate all that use it in a slurry system to harvest the methane off of or basically compost it with a whole bunch of straw and organic matter and do what we're doing and use some heat and methane from the compost itself our system right now is running water to heat our floor inside the tunnels and we're using air to passively heat all this up and blow all of that heat up into the tunnels as well and it's only half and half half of it's going in the tunnel and half of it's heating the airspace in the greenhouse so if we can take all of that venting methane from our compost that was just going to exit our pile through our tarps and enter the atmosphere if we can trap that methane and burn it we're doing a little better because methane has 200 percent more infrared opacity than co2 does meaning that it holds 200 percent more energy energy as heat than CO2 so it is much much more damaging to our environment. Methane can start forming about seven days after creation of your pile, wood chips or compost and it can take up to 30 to 60 days depending on how hot your compost gets or what material you're using. Methane starts to be created in little pockets where there is no oxygen so it creates in the absence of oxygen and it grows its highest production at about 90 to 100 degrees or around body temperature. The average person per day creates about one cubic foot of methane or about six to eight hundred BTUs of heat. So when we're burning methane we have CH4 plus oxygen when it's oxidizing. So the CH4 is our methane and O2 is oxygen. As long as we have an ample oxygen supply we can have a complete combustion up top here. Complete combustion creates CO2 and H2O. So carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now if we don't have an ample supply of oxygen, we're going to have an incomplete combustion here. So we got our methane plus oxygen without any extra oxygen, we're going to form carbon monoxide and water, which carbon monoxide is very toxic and we don't want to create that. So being in the greenhouse, I'm not worried about having incomplete combustion because we have lots and lots of oxygen in here being created by all these plants. And I always pull these hoops up to let them breathe and I'll open the doors if I can when it's sunny like this because our systems paired with passive heat from the sun, we can heat this greenhouse up pretty quickly back to normal temperatures, 60, 70 degrees, even if it's 15 degrees outside, allowing us to refresh our air and get good ventilation in here in the winter time. Methane becomes combustible at five parts per million, and it becomes explosive, like explosively dangerous and has a violent shock to the explosion at about 17 parts per million, meaning that an open gas coming into contact with an open flame at 17 parts per million would explode. So when we got one mole of methane, the unit of measurement, it equals 16 grams of methane. And when we burn that one unit of measurement for methane, we get 44 grams of CO2 and about 36 grams or two moles of H2O or water. So we can fit about 1.26 moles of methane in a cubic foot and we fit about 0.85 of a mole of CO2 in a cubic foot for reference just to give everybody an idea of those measurements there when you burn one mole of methane you're creating about 843 BTU so we've got this inner tube here we're gonna use this inner tube I already took the bead out so I'm able to use this freely without any stopping or blockage of the airflow. So I did some measurements and kind of rough estimated that I could fit about 3.5 
cubic feet of air or methane in my inner tube here. So if we got three and a half cubic feet of methane in our inner tube, we're gonna have to multiply that by 1.26, the amount of moles of methane you can fit inside of a cubic foot. So when we run that, we come up with 4.41 moles of methane times the amount of BTUs created from one mole of methane. So we come up with 3,721.77 BTUs created off of filling this inner tube one time and burning. Now obviously storage is the issue right now. We only have this little inner tube, but that is by design. I wanted to go small scale at first so I could get my bearings on this and understand the fundamentals of it as an experiment so I can progress further and share everything I'm learning also. Now 3,700 BTUs really doesn't sound like much and that's not a high number. We're putting about 10,000 or so BTUs in the greenhouse. Properly transferring that 3,700 BTU could potentially make or break the greenhouse. We could have a really nice heat sink of water or stone and rock. So let's check out my own variation of a methane capture kit. Now I've studied this for quite a while and I just always was fascinated by this kind of stuff so I've got a regular inner tube and I had taken out my little pin here so I had taken out the actual bead from the center of the inner tube and a simple way to do that without the tool is a nice cotter pin here that cotter pin fit right in there and I was able to unscrew it very easily so this inner tube is our storage tank for methane and this is going to expand and contract as we fill and use the methane I'm yet to figure out where I'm gonna hook this up as I go through the system I'll find a nice safe place out of the Sun hopefully and nice and protected from puncture so setting this aside I've got a ton of my PVC quarter inch inner diameter, nice braided hose. I use PVC. This is least corrosive with methane. Methane won't affect this and the heat won't affect it. This won't break down on us inside our compost pile. So this is the other roll. I've got about 30 feet all together or so. And this is our methane capture tube here. So I went through and drilled a bunch of holes and all of this was just stuff I had. Everything was stuff I had except the tubing, I guess. I had to buy that. But I just stuck some mesh on the side and clamped it down. Same thing here. And I rigged up a system where this hose is nice and protected from our mesh there. And it will not come out. So this is a nice gap and all the methane can flow in on both ends and force it through our tube here. All right, this one goes back in the box. So this is going to be our bubbling jar. So, oh. So this is an old pickle jar. You can see I clamped the backside of our little barb here and I just used some RTV and this is a really, really nice seal. I drilled the hole out and I got this plumber's putty for the top where my hose is going to go in. I'm gonna put this back together and kind of explain how this is actually going. So this hose is actually gonna run all the way down and I'm going to have a amount of water in here so the methane will flow from the pile bubble up through the water and then be forced to the next part of our system so we'll go from the pickle jar to the T fitting to our ball valve here and then on to our actual burner with a nice little screen in it so I'll hook my hose up here and the methane will flow through and be burned at the end of this metal pipe and of course I used a few little metal hose clamps to secure everything I want everything to be nice and airtight this ball valve I ended up hooking two little barbs into little quarter inch barbs so everything should be situated I'm going to tape all this up so I don't have any leaks before I actually run the system so I'm gonna go run this tubing out into my compost pile. I'm gonna bury it in the outside where it's not too hot, where it's about 100 degrees or so. Then I wanna cover that back up and insulate it back in so I don't disturb the actual pile. It is freezing out here. I wanted to bundle back up before I jumped out here. So I just barely started digging. I'm already seeing about 75 degrees coming off and I got steam coming out of there. So I'm gonna get this dug out and I'm gonna shove this in here and we'll jump back inside the greenhouse. So we've got our whole running in we got that buried out in our compost pile it's nice and warm I buried it about three or four feet deep on the outer edge of the pile it was about 100 degrees 120 degrees it was warm on my gloves so we're gonna take this inlet this will be methane into the greenhouse we will be running it into this pickle jar and bubbling it up 
and then we will transfer that methane gas that rises off to the next part of the system which I'm going to show everybody exactly how I'm going to hook this up. We're going to slip on a hose clamp to secure the top of this one and just slip it right over. We got enough hose here. So this is what we're looking at. We've got our hose in, bubble up, methane tube out and then we will connect this to a T-fitting. Throw another hose clamp on here and we'll connect our T-fitting. So we've got our T running one to our actual storage here and then the other running to our burner. Got ourselves another little chunk of hose. I'm gonna take a hose clamp and slip it on here and run to our T-fitting. And then we're gonna throw another hose clamp on there for the other end. And this one will run right over top of our little threaded fitting here and that fits rather tight so we've got a nice seal so throwing the hose clamps on as i go i've got my nice little stretch of hose here to run from my t fitting and my storage source from my methane end and from my inner tube to the ball valve so we'll be able to control whether we're burning or not or releasing methane but we'll always be stored so we've got our burner where our fuel will exit and then we've got our ball valve where we can turn the fuel on and off running back to our T to our bubbling system where we're purifying and concentrating methane and to our storage tank I have to tighten everything up and I'll kind of show everybody everything so this is the basic gist of it right here I ran this line where all of our other lines run. We've got lots of extra hose here just because I wanted to be able to work this system around. So we've got this bubbler. This is where our hose comes in for methane and where we got to seal with putty to create a nice seal. Once we get this set in place where we're going to tack the lines in place and make them like a hard line so they don't move and we don't have gaps forming because this is dangerous if we've got methane leaking into the greenhouse. So as the methane bubbles through it will come up and run right up this new hose exiting out to our T fitting and then it runs to our storage tank so there'll be pressure on this and the methane will form pressure because it's buried under compost out there so we'll have pressure and we'll be able to run that pressure through this ball valve down to the actual burner i got a little screen in there we're gonna see how well all this works obviously our storage is kind of insufficient but three and a half cubic feet depending on how much methane we're going to create anyway this is just an experiment just wanted to see how well this is going to work so if anybody's got any questions on anything i talked about today or anything we got going on all the systems running and operating perfectly i'm sweating out here with my long sleeve on it's like 70 degrees in the greenhouse i didn't expect such good temperature and even on those cloudy days we've got decent heat in here 50 55 degrees is awesome when it's 15 degrees outside so everybody stay tuned as i'm going to passively heat this tank up my egg paint is faring decently well i sprayed a lot of it off with washing my bricks off when I got all these dug out here so kind of got beat up right off the bat I think it would have worked a little better because when it's got condensation I don't notice anything running off but at a high pressure it just peels right off we're gonna do a nice little heating experiment hopefully everybody finds it interesting where we're gonna be passively heating this with only solar power